Hello there, this is John Bishop, and I'm with my very good friend, Dr. Nancy Flournoy and uh, Eddie Akitsu. And uh, what we're doing today is uh, we're just uh, going to go through a little presentation about the uh, Nirvana patch. And uh, to start it off, we're just going to watch this video, and then I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Flournoy. But here we go. Sometimes life comes at you at a thousand miles per hour. Picture your daily workload. How do you feel about how hectic life can be? What do the demands of your life sound like? Well, now there's an easy way to cut through it all and discover your personal nirvana. Life is challenging for everyone. We could all use an emotional boost now and then. Can you picture what your life would look like if you were even happier? Even in those moments when you feel a little overwhelmed? Not surprisingly, the answer to this question is directly related to body chemistry. Introducing the Nirvana System, a dual action mood enhancer unlike any other. Think about that euphoric feeling you get when you flirt with someone you're attracted to. It's actually produced by the body's natural release of endorphins, but it doesn't last very long. And that's where Nirvana does something no other product can. The Nirvana supplement includes a natural seaweed extract that not only supports healthy endorphin production, but its patented stabilization process produces sustained results. So your outlook becomes brighter. Life stressors feel less overwhelming and things sound more doable. And unlike its pharmaceutical counterparts that can take nine or more months to build up in your system, Nirvana does this in just a few weeks. So you get the short and long-term results you want in one convenient system. Completing the system is the Nirvana patch, a patented technology that enhances your mood with no drugs, no chemicals, and no stimulants. So together, the supplement and patch work synergistically to support a prolonged sense of happiness and well-being. Now you can find greater happiness, even in the most hectic moments, through an amazingly simple and powerful change in body chemistry. Discover your personal nirvana today. Well, I really felt like I wanted to jump into that water like those two. <laughs> but uh, I am wearing the Nirvana patch uh, to show people this is the most common place uh, where you place the patch. And um, Nancy, you disappeared. How'd that happen? Oh, magic. That's um, a, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> you just disappeared. So uh, that's like on your third eye uh, position. And uh, I, I like to use this patch uh, during the evenings when I'm doing some meditation. And you know, I've noticed a big difference. I've been using Nirvana patch for, I don't know, maybe a little over a year now. So uh, I've definitely felt some really wonderful effects from using it. So, um, okay, so well, I'm gonna share my screen with Dr. Flournoy and Nancy, take it away. All right, thank you. And I'll mute. So thank you, uh, John, for having me. I'm Dr. Nancy Flournoy. I'm uh, Curator, Distinguished Professor of um, Statistics Emerita at the University of Missouri. My expertise is clinical trials, and I've been working with scientists for a, in, in science for decades now. Um, I'm very excited about the various patches and have um, been happy to uh, try and digest what, um, what, what I can of what I can find about the science around them. The Nirvana patch is a little bit of a challenge because our um, CEO of LifeWave, uh, uh, David Schmidt, has not um, given us a, a lot of clues. As you heard in the in the video that that was John just played, 
uh, the, there was a reference to endorphins, uh, but it was only explicit in the context of the seaweed supplement. And so we know that uh, he's designed these patches to reflect specific wavelengths back in the body to cause specific um, uh, changes, to give specific messages to the body to, to usually create a particular peptide or something. And, and we really um, haven't been told what that specific goal is. So um, I'm going to talk, uh, but we know that it affects the mood and we've heard lots and lots of um, testimonies to the effect. And so I'm gonna talk about some things that are known about chemistry and biochemistry and mood and encourage you all to uh, join my search for greater understanding as to what is going on. So, First thing I'd like to say is that uh, stress is not all bad. Stress, uh, we think of stress as being, being bad, but good stress uh, drives you to eat and sleep and it keeps your brain goal oriented and motivates you to complete tasks. So you don't want to be without stress at all. Um, we also know there are lots of, there are physical activities that can boost your mood like meditation um, actually um, working out, doing something physical, laughing, and, um, and, and so it's an interplay between um, chemistry, electricity, your activities. It's very complex. So before talking about the chemistry, I'd just like to um, go back to the relationship between um, mood and depression and our brain waves. So delta waves are um, typically deep sleep, although um, in a meditative state, you can, um, you can get into the, to a delta brain wave state um, at really any time, um, but it, it is a particular uh, range of hertz in the brain and if you can see down the left-hand side, these are these specific uh, Hertz values going from 0.5 to four. And as you get your brain waves um, into these particular wave links, you go um, from a state of relaxation, um, a, a, a little higher Hertz and you have an endorphin relief, you enter a euphoric state, well-being, <clears throat> the uh, pituitary gland will be stimulated to reduce hormones. We're gonna talk more about the pituitary gland in a minute. Um, at at 2.5 Hertz, you, you will um, produce uh, opioids and therefore get relief from pain. You can get restorative sleep. And, um, and this last one down here, um, enkephalin release by the CNS and the adrenal medulla is a natural stress and pain uh, reduction agent. So um, when I was in really bad shape, I did uh, brainwave training and listened to uh, CDs that took me through the various states and got all the garbage out of my mind so that I could in fact get into the Delta state very quickly. But one of the things that um, David has pointed out to us is with the help of these patches, you don't have to work so hard to meditate to end up with the same um, benefits. So, uh, mood is this complex um, interaction between our experiences and our brain chemistry. And uh, it is not just things that are done to you as in your experiences, but your experiences will um, spark emotional responses. And uh, these, these responses then can uh, uh, stimulate neurotransmitters, that is the, chem the chemicals that carry messages around in your body and also hormones. And those 
um, neurotransmitters and hormones then go on to generate the emotions that you're going to have throughout the day. So it's the chemistry working in tandem with the events, and I'll add in a couple more things later, but for now, let's talk about the chemistry and the events that are going to trigger your different types of mood. So let's um, look at um, a main center of all this activity. Here's the brain up here, and you see this little tiny box which is blown up here in the picture. And the, the main little um, structure here is the hypothalamus, the hypothal hypothalamus, thalamus, and it's one of the main regulators of the hormones. It drops down here, kind of looks like a couple of testicles, but this is actually your pituitary glands. And you see this, this um, incredible um, feedback loop. You don't need to look at the details, but you see these messages going out from the pituitary gland all over the body to the, the uterus and the kidneys and the testes, and then stimulating these different organs to produce um, hormones, be it testosterone or estrogen or um, uh, your corticosteroids, your thyroid hormones, these hormones then come back and, and uh, then have a feedback loop back to the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus. So this is pretty complex. It's really amazing that anything works. Um, we're really quite miraculous um, uh, bodies that we, that we live in here. So the, the moods are uh, triggered in this limbic system, and this is just a blow up of the brain then to, to this area where we have the hypothalamus that we were just talking about here in this, this blue and the pituitary um, gland hanging off of it. And we're going to come eventually to the uh, amygdala and the hippocampus. Um, they all have a role to play and so these, this, these parts, oops, these parts of the body, notice here's the brain stem coming up. And of course the, the top of the, I mean, the, the um, this is your spinal column coming up and the top of that we call the brain stem. And these very important um, uh, structures with these very important functions are all sitting there right at the, your, your brain stem, which is your, um, your basic emotions. So the, this area deals with basic drives, emotions, and memory. Uh, the hippocampus, uh, which is over here, is where you do uh, memory processing. The amygdala is where you process your, your fear and flight mechanism, and it's a major site of aggression. The hypothalamus uh, tells you you're hungry, thirsty, regulates your body temperature, your pleasure, and it regulates the pituitary gland, which regulates your hormones. That's sort of what we were looking at in the last picture. So first, let's talk about oxy oxytocin. Uh, it is produced uh, uh, within the hypothalamus itself uh, as a hormone, and it's called the love hormone. And it's the one that helps you form your emotional attachments that are um, feelings of love. And it's also stimulated when you, when you do things um, that are um, loving, as in singing to a children or embracing a loved one. Uh, very, so if you feel loving, you're going to produce more of the, the loving hormone that's going to make you feel more loving. And it is produced in the hypothalamus, but then it get, it's the pituitary gland that sends it out to the body to give you these good feelings, which of course are somewhat the opposite of depression. 
Now the endorphins, which is the, the one set of hormones that we've heard David mention in connection with the um, Nirvana patch, uh, they're also produced in the, in the well, they're, they're produced and stored in the pituitary itself. And they're the ones that uh, are our opioids. So they um, are mainly found once they're produced. They, there's a lot of them that, that stay in the brain, go to different parts of the brain, the spinal cord, peripheral nerves, and the digestive tract. And they uh, primarily inhibit the communication of pain signals. So if you are in um, physical or emotional pain, then the, these endorphins are, you know, really to come to your rescue in um, when you're feeling dire. And one thing that they do is increase um, what's called dopamine. So they increase dopamine production. And this second little picture down here shows from the pituitary gland the, the route in which dopamine um, follows once it's produced, mainly works here in the front of the brain. And it, um, it causes you to want, desire, seek out, search. It increases your level of arousal and makes you goal, um, increases your goal-directed behavior. Notice some of these um, activities or things that were mentioned in the slide. Again, we don't quite know what that patch is exactly designed to do. But if you have an increased dopamine production, you're more curious about ideas, you're going to search for information, you're like listening to this talk, or it's like me preparing this talk because I want to know more about um, how uh, everything's working. So um, endorphins, if you're in good physical health, then a lot of events, we mentioned some of them, um, well, we mentioned some of them with the, uh, with the love hormone, but these, um, these are more like the happy hormone, the happy, and the endorphins are more like the happy hormone as opposed to the love hormone. So you're going to stimulate their production by laughing, crying, um, yawning, getting a massage, um, lots of, of good natural uh, behavior. Now, if you have depression, typic, there are a number of things that can cause depression, and among them are abnormalities with respect to your endorphins. So if you're not absorbing them normally in your spine and your brain, then that can result in depression. Um, you can have physical problems. The endorphins are supposed to go um, attached to things, reception. They're going to find receptors and attach to different um, uh, molecules in your body. And if that doesn't work well, you can be depressed. And um, if you do have elevated levels of endorphins uh, that, are, that are higher than is normal, you don't necessarily feel them, but you can feel this free floating you know, sort of not being part of the earth and not being on the earth um, feeling. So endorphins are really very important for keeping us grounded and feeling good. So another little um, place on the brain here, this, hot, this lit up area that on each side is called the um, hippocampus. And that means seahorse in Greek. And it's where your sensory uh, information is processed. And it's relevant to the mood that we're talking about because experiencing smells linked to positive memories can elevate your mood. So the hippocampus gets involved in uh, this way. And it's, um, it smells that, it, it, relate, it connects smells to your long-term memory. So if you have a really traumatic um, event in your life, either good or bad, that trauma is gonna get connected 
in your mind to whatever you were smelling at the time. And then later that smell will evoke a memory of what happened then. So this can be very, um, this hippocampus can be very intimately involved with um, problems of depression if they're associated with negative trauma, traumatic events. Now, um, in, in, in the hippocampus is where the brain cells are created from stem cells called neurogenesis. And this activity maintains your, your new brain cells are going to help your brain remain uh, be uh, plastic, that is pliable and, and not rigid. And it's going to help you to learn new things. And um, so this is very important. And as you your brain cells are formed, you get off, you, you make new opportunities for the hippocampus to link your sensory information to what you learn. So as I said, we're very complex individuals. Now, at the end of the hippocampus here, at, as, as you come out to the end of the hippocampus, you get this little, little knobs on each side, which are the amygdala. And they are what actually link the memories to emotions. Um, so the, the, uh, the, uh, the hippocampus was linking like your smells to your uh, memories, and this is linking your memories to your emotions. And um, so the next time you feel a rush of pride or excitement, it, this is the part of your body that's, that's working and it can work to, it can link to negative emotions as well as positive emotions. Now the serotonin hormone is called the master mood regulator. So we're talking about mood. We need to talk about the serotonin uh, hormone. And the picture here is a picture of um, a, well, nerve cells with a gap in between and information is going to get um, transmitted from one to the other. And so there's a, a compound called tryptophan up here at the top, and it's what um, serotonin is going to get made of. And so uh, down, we come down towards the end of the cell, and we actually get our serotonin um, made. And then it comes, and in the in between the the two nerves um, ends here, it it uh, gets sent out. Some goes across to the next nerve, but some gets sent out into the, the big open void. And then when it's done its job, it gets sucked back up here and uh, recycled. So it's important that um, this whole process work well. The serotonin uh, hormone uh, elevates your mood um, in that if you don't have enough, you're going to feel sad and lethargic and sleepy. Uh, and if you have plenty, you're alert and content. So it elicits feelings of happiness and well-being, sharpens the memory, promotes healthy sleep habits, and here facilitates the communication between neurons and controls the intensity of signals. So now we start to get this um, connection between the chemistry and mood and the um, bioelectrical activity of our body and mood. And um, you can get uh, tryptophan in turkey, eggs, cheese, high protein foods. But you can see now we've already been through several different hormones, all relating to uh, mood in one way or another. So again, our mood regulation is, is take, it takes quite a bit to keep us in a good mood. This is what the serotonin hormone looks like. It's really quite a complex jumble of, of um, atoms there. And Um, they also believe that serotonin 
can help you recognize when you're full and prevent overeating and minimize cravings. Well, when I saw this, I immediately thought of the, um, uh, the SP6, is that what it's called? The uh, patch that has to do with exactly these activities. And so I put a big question mark in my mind and that is, is this what is being targeted with that patch? And we haven't studied that patch yet. So I don't know when I don't know when I study it, if David's going to tell us, but that certainly sounds like what um, we hear about that patch. So we can't pass up the cortisol hormone. It is the body's main stress hormone. And again, um, you have good stress and bad stress and cortisol triggers them both. So cortisol is uh, not necessarily bad, but it's what going, it is what is going to initiate your fight or flight emotional reaction. So the signal would have come from your uh, pituitary gland and it gets sent down, you know, from your brain to your adrenal glands in the bottom of your, the trunk of your body. And then this hormone will be created um, if you are really challenged and, um, and with a stressful event to respond. You know, if it's a positive response, it means that, you know, you could uh, pick the truck up off the, um, off somebody and get it out of the way. You can do amazing feats of strength. And if it's uh, not uh, proper, then it really causes you to be um, a total wreck. And I know that because because uh, I've known somebody that had <laughs> um, totally wild cortisol um, and, and it was took a lot to get it under control. Uh, what else can we say about here? So if it's good, you're going to feel invigorated, alert and determined. And it's not something that you know, it's something that's supposed to supposed to help you when you have um, a, a, a stressor. Uh, it's, it's not a, like an even well. It's 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 um, it's it's for stressful situations. So, too much cortisol. You can see here, it goes back up to the brain and makes you anxious, gives you depression and headaches. Um, it can also weaken your immune system, give you heart disease, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, digestive issues, and nerve problems. So you don't want too much uh, cortisol. Um, and here is the relationship between cortisol and mood and um, interacting with the brain we talked about before. So to keep uh, cortisol from dampening your mood, you can um, exercise, you can socialize, some of these activities we talked about in connection with the other hormones. And then there's also supplements, which I won't get into, which can help you uh, maintain your cortisol. Now, um, I'm running towards the end of this uh, discussion, but I, I had a bunch of slides on this and, and we don't have time to talk about it, but I, I'm, I, this, this, I wanna read the top here for you because this is what takes us in a different direction altogether. So recent evidence indicates that problems in information processing with neural networks rather than changes in chemical balance might underlie depression. So we sort of got a hint of that when we were looking at those two nerve cells and talking about you know, what needed to get across the nerve cells, uh, across the gaps between the nerve cells. But this is again, moving towards the electro, electro or electromagnetic uh, functioning of the body as opposed to the chemical um, part of the body. And it is more related to, more directly related to light. And so um, this, these, this, uh, I found this paper, this is brand new 2021, um, that is on 
sunflower seed protein prevents depression by promoting neurotransmitter production and preventing oxidative stress. So it's, um, uh, uh, again, and then, and then there's another paper uh, which connects this um, uh, neurotropic factor with your synaptic placidity, cognitive function, and dysfunction. And then I, I, I had just come across, and there's a lot of papers one could, could look at this and spend a, an hour, a, you know, a session on this if it's related to the, the patches at all, or maybe it will be related to the patches at all. We hear David talk a lot about plasticity. Um, but it's a whole different kind of, you know, we've got the chemistry, we've got the brainwave uh, function, and now we've got the function of the, um, the neurotransmitters and the electronic signals that are going throughout the body that are all related to whether we are depressed or happy. And so uh, I am going to quit there and be happy to um, answer questions or uh, take notes about questions that we might pursue. Thank you, Nancy. That was great. Great as usual. Yeah. So yeah, I thought I'd mention, um, yeah, with this uh, uh, Nirvana, uh, there, it comes actually in a, a system, uh, which is called the uh, Nirvana Mood Enhancer System. And it does come with, um, it comes in this little box here and these little tablets that are really tiny. That's where the, you know, uh, from uh, seaweed extract and also uh, vanilla bean extract. So uh, when you put, just put them in your mouth, they go down really easy. They don't take like, like ice cream or anything, that's for sure. But, but anyway, it's supposed to help actually synergistically work with the, uh, with the Nirvana patches, okay? And so these patches basically uh, come from, <laughs> uh, the, for the cost of about, uh, cost of a cup of coffee per day, this is a pretty good deal. Um, and like I said, I've been using uh, the Nirvana system for about a year now. Um, it's been a very stressful time as we know with the pandemic. And so I, I think I'm probably pretty, pretty much like everybody. It's not uh, been a really uh, easy going time. But I really, when I came uh, in, in contact with this particular product and I started using, I could really see, especially after a few weeks, uh, like Nancy was, it's like after a few weeks, uh, it takes time to build up the endorphins, you know, in that part of your brain. And so I didn't feel anything so significant in the beginning, but after a few weeks, weeks I did, and then I just kind of got, it's kind of like my, you know, my little meditation friend. So uh, I, I tell my friends sometimes, I call it the Buddha patch. <laughs> so, uh, and it's also helped some of my friends come. Uh, I had one friend in particular who had a 17 year old daughter um, who was going through deep depression and she would not go to school and she stayed most of the day in her bedroom. Her mother became very uh, concerned, of course. And so uh, I, I told her about this product and actually sent it out to her to see if it might help. So the first day she didn't even want to put it on. She didn't want to do it. Um, so I told him, I said, well, why don't you wait until your daughter's asleep and put it, put it on the back of her neck, you know, at, at, at night. Uh, and so she woke up in the morning and she, <laughs> her daughter was saying, what's this thing on the back of my neck? And um, so that, that particular morning, she didn't, didn't there wasn't too much uh, change in her. Um, <clears throat> but her mother told her a little bit more about it and said that, you know, my, my friend told me about this and he, he thought this could really help you. So she decided to take it a second night and uh, woke up the next morning and her mom uh, was surprised that she was up very early cleaning the kitchen, which she'd not ever done before. And so her mother was quite surprised at that and asked her if she wanted to go to school. Uh, and she says, no, mom, but I, you know, I'd like to just kind of clean up my room today and, and do some things. So that was positive, even after the second day. So I said, well, definitely, uh, I told my friend to get, get the patch on her one more night. And she did. And sure enough, her daughter woke up the next morning and said, mom, I'd like to go to school. 
And her mother was quite surprised. She was a little bit worried too, because it's been, it had been weeks uh, that she'd been out of, you know, she uh, did not go to school at the normal time in September. And this was already middle of October. And so anyway, uh, her mother took her to school and was worried all day long that, you know, something she was just going to call and, and, and be all, uh, uh, you know, out of sorts and everything. Uh, but no, uh, she picked her up from school. She came home and her mother said, well, uh, how was school? And she says, oh, it was great. And she says, really, uh, you, you're, are you okay? And, and her daughter just told her mother, says, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Almost like she forgot the whole thing. So uh, her mother was very moved. Actually, when I called her that day, she was literally in tears uh, about her daughter being able to go back to school. And then not just that, just the fact that she was just out of that uh, negative space in, 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 in uh, what she'd been experiencing for over six weeks. So yeah, I, I can really say that there's something there's something even though great it's story and and it is a wonderful patch i know i use it um pretty often myself mm -hmm. and yeah and as we found out with some pa other patches that we've looked at sometimes you know like what's what they're you know basically uh ex you know the explanation sometimes they, they have other studies and there's always continuing studies on these patches and i think anyway uh and as they find more things uh you could find you know, additional benefits, which would be really wonderful. So uh, uh, that's all it. But there's all nothing all. like finding the benefits yourself by having tried the path. That's the thing. And, and the wonderful thing, thanks for reminding me, Nancy, because these, uh, all of the LifeWave products come with, get this, a 90 day money back guarantee. That means uh, you can use a product for 90 days. And if you're not satisfied, you just take the sleeve, send it back to the company and they'll fully refund your, your money. So um, I, I don't know if uh, there's too many companies uh, that I've ever heard of that give, give such a, an amazing guarantee. So it's really kind of, I call it kind of a <laughs> no risk, high reward, not even a low risk, but a no, no risk, high reward kind of product and company. So uh, with that, I'm, I'm going to conclude it today with Nancy and uh, 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 hopefully we'll- Thank you, John. Thank uh, you for having me. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Okay. Have a great day.